Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the formation of polypeptides, peptide bonds in condensation, peptide bonds in hydrolysis, and then we'll finish with a summary. So we need to know how we form polypeptides. So we've already said previously that the amino acids are the building blocks or the monomers of larger proteins. So the amino acids are the monomers. So remember there are 20 different types of amino acid, and here's just illustrating that you can get different types. And as these join up together, they'll form a protein. If we have two amino acids linked together, they form a dipeptide. So here are two separate amino acids. When these two amino acids are joined together, we form a chain connecting two of them, and this is known as a dipeptide. So the di part is referring to two. Peptide relates to several amino acids joined together. If we join more than two, so we have many amino acids joined together, they form a polypeptide, so poly meaning many. And this is a protein polymer. So sometimes the words protein and polypeptide are used indistinctively. They can mean roughly the same thing. But essentially polypeptide is more specific because a polypeptide is lots of amino acids joined into a long chain of more than two. Protein is much more of a vague term. We form a protein when one or more polypeptide chains fold into a specific correct shape. And the shape is what allows that protein to perform its specific function. So initially what we had is a polypeptide, which is a long chain of connected amino acids. The polypeptide itself is just referring to this chain of amino acids. What it does then is it folds up into the right shape, and sometimes it interacts with other proteins too. So this long purple chain represents one polypeptide, and you'll see that it gets these distinct shapes. Sometimes parts of it are made into a spiral, sometimes parts of it undergo this zigzaggy sheet-like structure, but overall the shape of it or the 3D shape, is folded specifically to give it a particular function. And it's only when it's folded up into this right shape, into its right function, that we call it a protein. So this might help you to distinguish the term polypeptide from the protein. And sometimes this chain will link up with other polypeptides in order for the function to be achieved. So first of all, let's talk about how peptide bonds are formed in condensation. So two amino acids get joined together in a condensation reaction to form a dipeptide. So remember, we had two amino acid monomers. We add them together, and in a reaction, we form a dipeptide. And the process of doing this is condensation. And remember, in a condensation reaction, we're adding things together to make longer chains. So looking at this at a more chemical level, the condensation reaction occurs between the carboxyl group, or the COOH, of one amino acid and the amino group, or NH2, of the other amino acid. So here we've got our two amino acids, number one and number two. Remember, the amino acids have constant groups. The only one that differs is the R group. But they will all have a carboxyl group. And on the other side of this, they all have an amino group. And it's these two which come together to form the reaction that connects them together into a dipeptide. So as with any condensation reaction, a molecule of water is released and lost as one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms are removed from the amino acid pair. So what's happened is the amino group has come close to the carboxyl group of the other amino acid and during the condensation reaction, water is removed. And you'll find this is the case between any connection reaction, for example in lipids or carbohydrates as well. So it's going to remove the OH of one group and the H of another, and that gives us two H's and an O, and we know that two H's and an O is H2O, forming the water. When the water is removed, the bond forms, and we call it a peptide bond. A peptide bond is what joins the two amino acids together, and this overall structure is now the dipeptide. So we had the original amino acid here, the second amino acid here, now joined together, and in the center, there's a covalent bond connecting what was the carboxyl group and what was the amino group. And this is the peptide bond. And of course, from the previous reaction, water was removed as well. So by definition, a peptide bond is a covalent bond formed when two amino acids are joined together in a condensation reaction. Many amino acids can be joined together in this way in a series of condensation reactions to form a polypeptide. So in this first instance, we've got the original reaction we just did, whereby we have two amino acids forming a dipeptide. And again, this would be a condensation reaction where water would be lost. This dipeptide can then have another amino acid added on as well, as number three. 
So this then forms a tripeptide. And you can keep adding amino acids onto the chain to get longer and longer until you get polypeptide, poly meaning many. So every time you do add an amino acid, there's going to be water lost in every condensation reaction. So by definition, a polypeptide is a polymer made of many amino acids joined together by peptide bonds. And it wouldn't hurt to mention that these are condensation reactions. So we've talked about how peptide bonds get formed. It's important to go the opposite way and work out how they're broken down. A dipeptide can be broken down into the two amino acids that formed it through a hydrolysis reaction. So this time we're going backwards. We have our dipeptide, so a peptide made of two amino acids, one and two. And then through a reaction, we get the two amino acids separated now. And this type of reaction is called hydrolysis. So this is the opposite of condensation. And because it's the opposite of condensation, a hydrolysis reaction requires water because one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms are needed to be added to the dipeptide to reform each amino acid. So remember, we've got a peptide bond between the two amino acids. And in order to break this bond and give back the atoms that each amino acid wants independently, we have to add H2O because then one group will take some of the water, another group will take the other part of the water, and then each of the amino acids can go their separate ways. Adding water therefore breaks the peptide bond, forming two amino acids. And now you can see that as we added the water, we've replaced an H on the amino group of the right amino acid and the OH of that on the carboxyl group of the other amino acid. So this is where the water is used. The peptide bond is now lost and broken. And in the same way that we can build up polypeptides by lots of condensation reactions, we can break down polypeptides into amino acids by a series of hydrolysis reactions. And we can do this in two ways. Usually when you have condensation, you just build one at a time, lengthening the chain. In hydrolysis, we can do it either by breaking down one off every time, so snipping off first the green one, and then snipping off the brown one, and then the yellow one. Or we can do it the other way where we split it in half, and then split each of these into their amino acids too. Either way, every time you break a peptide bond, water is needed because this is a hydrolysis reaction. So never forget that a water molecule is always needed every time there's a bond being broken. So just to summarize these two reactions, in condensation, amino acids are joined together and in hydrolysis, they're broken apart. Condensation forms water, just like the process of condensation on a mirror in the bathroom. And in hydrolysis, we use water Condensation creates a peptide bond, whereas hydrolysis breaks down a peptide bond. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.